This message is brought to you from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lily of the Valley Parish. God bless you as you listen. Hello, my friend. Welcome to today's telecast. This is your host, Pastor George Unogu, the pastor in charge of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lily of the Valley. The message I'm about to share with you, I believe, will touch and meet you at the point of need. The Bible says we should study the Word of God to make us approved. Workmen that need not to be ashamed, but really dividing the Word of God. And the Bible says you hear when you hear, and hear, and hear, faith comes. So I thank you as you're listening, and I know that God will definitely meet you at the point of need. Join me now. And God will meet you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Quickly. It's those that write their name quickly. Ushers. What are you doing at the back? What is this? Essay. Get a fresh, get a fresh sheet to make it easy. Don't complicate my life. Listen, I don't want anybody I do. Get a fresh sheet. You're not writing. You're not writing. You're talking too much. Come here. Let's do project. Is it for them? Yes. For Why not put the name of the first one? How will you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 We must belong to a house fellowship. We are a biblical community. Let's open to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 42. I am going to read from the Living Bible. Acts, chapter 5, verse 42. Acts 5, 42 says from the Living Bible, And every day in the temple and in their home, Bible classes, they continue to teach and to preach that Jesus is the Messiah. The King James says, and daily in the temple and in every house. There are two emphases here. Daily in the temple, which can be likened to Lily of the Valley Auditorium today. And they continue to teach, they say, in the temple and in their home, Bible classes. Fellowship goes in the auditorium, and at the end, it extends to the homes. Praise the name of the Lord. That's a popular saying, a wise saying, that is rendered this way. It says, the strength of any church is not only determined by the effectiveness of the gathered congregation, but also by the activities of the scattered congregation. The strength of any church is not just determined by the effectiveness of the congregations when they are gathered. Like this church, we gather here now. We pray, power of God is exhibited, people get healed, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. That's good. But it's part one of it. The total effectiveness of any church is also determined by the strength of the scattered congregation. When we leave our homes now, we go to various locations where we live. What are we doing there? Are we mobilizing ourselves to face God to do things? Our strength when we are scattered is very important. And that's the essence of the house fellowship. That's why we're gathered here to make sure we 
we, we, we organize ourselves. It's very important. The Bible talks about the preach, they did together in church and also in their homes. It's very important that you, because many of us don't even bother about the fellowship. It's not the biblical injunction. And because of that, we are not growing the way we are supposed to grow. Because of that, we are not interacting the way we are supposed to interact. Because of that, our needs are not met appropriately. Everybody on his own. It's not supposed to be so. Bible says that the apostles, they met in the temple and in their homes. And our requirement in lieu in of the value from redeemed Christian of God is just one hour on Sunday. From six to seven. One hour on Sunday. Where you meet, you share fellowship together, you pray, and you disperse. And there, many of us can grow because as we teach on Sundays, there are certain questions you cannot ask. But there, you can ask questions. There, you can share fellowship. There, you can pray to, for, together for one another. There, you can share your experiences. You'll be your brother's keeper. Are you with me? There, you can even exercise your giftings faster there because you have body-to-body -body administration. You are together. You have a problem, you call your neighbor. Your neighbor calls you. You watch over us back because you have a home base, a church in the home. It's biblical. During the first service, some people came and gave testimonies, and I will give opportunity today again, this, this second service, for people to come and give testimonies of how God has blessed them in his fellowships. Powerful blessing. I have experienced it, and I know those of you that are consistent will experience that. And our, our hope is that by the time we are through, many of you here, and some that are not regular here, you make up your mind to belong to that biblical community that Jesus is saying we should be. Don't excise yourself. There is a lot to learn. There is a lot to gain by being in house fellowship. Praise the name of the Lord. You, 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 those of us that were here during the prophet says a lot has been said about it. Not true? From the teachings. And I want you to go home and think about that. But before then, I want to give opportunity to people that want to give testimony. There are a lot of people here that, are, that God has touched in the house fellowship, something happened. So we need testimony. If you're here, raise up your hand. During the first service, a lot of people came to give testimonies of what God did during the house fellowship. Who were here? So raise up your hand. And we need, we need somebody. I'll point you out now. Who, please? Anybody? Huh? Testimony. In your house fellowships. Ngozi, go and repeat your testimony. Let me hear. Where is Ngozi? Uh, my testimony goes this way. You know, when I joined the house fellowship, um, Louder. I've been a member of the house fellowship for a long time. But 2010, you know, there is this um, challenge I have. You know, when I finish um, serving my boss then. So we are talking about the issue of um, settlement. You know, I was a kind of discouraged. I don't know where to start. And I'm a kind of um, person that I easily discuss my private uh, matter to somebody. But because of this house fellowship, you know, I keep coming. You know, we sit down, we interact. I know some of my leaders here, they can bear me witness. We interact together. You know, they force me out. I have to open up. Because whenever they are, we are sitting together laughing and somebody's um, sitting quiet, um, not saying anything, you know, you have to wake up and talk. So when I open my mouth, I speak. They encourage me. They give me some suggestions. Although before then, I have my own plan, which I know that if I take that plan, it might land me into some problems, which maybe by now, I don't know. But they open up. They encourage me. They supported me in the area of support. Because almost one year, I'm doing nothing. They asked me not to go anywhere. That I should remain in the house, or less if I want to go to church. I said, okay. 
But because of the house fellowship, I'm there. They encourage me. They support me. You know, even when I don't have anything, some of them even gave me some little, little things that I'll be doing to be earning some things to feed myself. You know, after some time, even those my boss self, they normally see me because during that period, in the morning I leave, they see me with Bible. You know, they are making caricature. They will say, ha, this man don't become pastor. You know? So, but all the same, they encourage me. So after all said and done, you know, we keep praying. They also pray for me because I table my issue to them. They pray for me. So during that period, one morning like that, I'm surprised. They, my boss just called me. Early morning, he said I should come, 6 a.m. He said I should prepare, that I'm going to bank with him that morning. I thought it's um, as usual, you know, when we go to bank and transfer money. So that morning, I just wake up, went to bank. When we get to the bank, he just writes the check and give me. He said, uh, you are free, you can go. I was looking at it. I ran to my house fellowship leader. I said, see you, something that I've been waiting for all this while. You know, I'm surprised. That is what um, house fellowship can do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to me that I should do something for him while waiting for this job. So when I resigned and then got administration to now accept pastor, pastor's offer to start a house fellowship. I then started a house fellowship of a debtor. The family, the sitting room was very small, but they gave it. So we started. I didn't know there was a problem in that home. That was why God was leading me there. They, they were newly married and their first child was having a night attack. Every night that baby would be restless and would be crying almost all night and they wouldn't know what was wrong. They went to hospital, there was no, nothing found, you know, every night. So they hid it from me, but at the time they couldn't hide it any longer. They told me. So we started praying. Every Sunday after the normal, route, the normal manual, we would not start praying for that baby. And the attack stopped. So some days that we stopped praying, we didn't pray. The attack will come back. I then understood that was why I was there, that we should continue praying. And we continued praying and the attack stopped. And then what God did for me concerning that, I've been looking for a job in a bank for years. They didn't even call me for an interview, not to talk of giving me an appointment letter. An MD in my church, MD of a bank. I had met him two years back for a job and he said there was no vacancy. So I left him. After two years, during that time that I was doing this for God, during workers' meeting, we just came, and he asked me, ah, what about your work? And I said I had resigned. He said, resign. Ah, you can work in my bank, in the administrative session of the bank. Just give me your CV when you're coming. I said, I have my CV here. I've been carrying it about. So I gave it to him. After two weeks, he called me to go for an interview, just for formality's sake. After that, they asked me, when do you want to resume work? That was just how I got that job without stress. One of the jobs that I asked God, I got another one within that time in an oil, oil servicing firm, but I chose the one of the bank. So God answered me because I answered his call for house fellowship. And then God blessed that family, you know, using me. Praise God. Amen. But I just keep going home. Right from that day, I start having hair pain, seriously. It's who, yeah, whenever it starts like this, I won't hear anything. It will come with pains, headache, everything. I keep on managing, managing. 
And again, I won't be able to talk. People will say, I'm not hearing you, but I'll be shouting on top of my voice. People won't hear me. But when I started the House Fellowship, I told the group, every, every Sunday they would be praying for me, pray for me, pray for me. So one night I was sleeping. I wake up in the morning. In my sleep, I had a dream. It's, so in that dream, I saw something walking out from my ears and he said, I wake up from that dream. I shouted. When I wake up, I didn't see anything. I discovered that it was a dream. But even when the healing did not come immediately because I was still feeling the pains, but the thing went gradually, gradually. I didn't feel anything again. And aside from that, so last year I was looking for accommodation. I didn't know how to raise the money because I don't really have enough money. But through there, they prayed for me. And they even assist me financially. And that was how I was able to, like, got apartment for myself. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we started the house fellowship in that place. And within a year, God opened our womb and she gave birth. Amen. Twelve years. Many, many testimonies. One of our members to give a testimony in the morning too. That house fellowship, we were praying. And... God gave a word that somebody is here. You are trying to influence something. And if you do it, it will lead the person to a destination God did not plan. And that was exactly the way God gave that word. I said, I don't know the person. You don't even need to identify yourself. But whatever you want to do, stop it. And let God do his job. So she struggled with it herself. And she now raised her hand and said, hmm. That this thing is tough because she already made contact. She did it, but she will stop it. But what God will just do is to give the brother a job between now and so so time because that is what the brother is looking for. And this and that. And we prayed for her. And she came back with a testimony that the job the brother got is even 10 times better than what she was even planning to influence for him. Praise the Lord. That's another testimony from that. Story. And for the leader, too. 2010, my apartment got burned, and uh, from that small house fellowship, I was assisted with a sum of 150,000 naira. And before the house got burned in September, I just paid my rent in August. So, for a year, and so it was difficult getting another apartment. But through the fellowship, God did that for me. So, that is what God has done. Praise the Lord. When we were in Freedom Hall, we were encouraged to join house fellowships. So we joined one near to our house. And in that house fellowship, we had fun. We had times of joy. People got married. We had times of sorrow. There was a couple who actually got married. And they went on honeymoon. And they died in the ADC crash. And we all sorrowed. But we enjoyed that house fellowship. And over time... People moved away, and we moved away. But we kept those relationships going. Some people graduated. Some got married. And there was this particular couple. We kept the relationship. In that house fellowship, a lot of us, even till today. But the fruit was to come so many years thereafter. When our son was born, when he was two weeks old, one of the couple had actually gone she was a medical doctor she became a pediatrician and all of that so when our son was two weeks old overnight he was stooling but because of nepa no lights we didn't really know how bad the situation was but towards morning about 5 a.m we thought this child had to see a doctor of course the only person we knew was this sister and we called them as early as that time she said come over to our house with the child. And we went to their house. And immediately she saw the child, her countenance changed. She quickly roused out of her house and came back with drip, set up drip. We were in our house for like three days because she said we couldn't move the child. And thereafter we ended up in hospital. It was years after when her husband now saw Caris, he said, hey, this boy, see how big you are. 
she, he now told me a story and said that morning when we brought this child, that his wife took one look at the child and came and told her this child was, did not stand a chance, you know. So he now came, he said he came and uh, he told the boy, you will not die in my house. You will not die in my house. And he started prophesying. Anyway, she took care of the situation. And it was this morning when the um, pastor was talking and I remembered. That was the fruit of a house fellowship. The couple, they are in Houston today. If I'm going to Houston, it's not to say, can I come and stay with you? It is a given that, you know, I have a house in Houston. I can always go there. Not only them, we have other people that we've shared fellowship with on house fellowship that have become, you know, like families. Praise the name of the Lord. Another one. It's area. My name is Samuel Ezekiel. So one day I was coming back from stadium. Me and my friend, if I, I met Pastor Wale at the Kilo bus stop after Finiki there. He packed the car. So they now begin to share rice and pure water and so. So they now say that if you want to eat, you can eat that the rice is free, that they are not selling the rice. So I now ask my friend that, ah, these people are within church who, because I used to see within church at the Bola there. So I collected the rice and the boy collected the rice also. They gave me some books and paper that if I want to come to the venue of this church, I should come. That next Sunday, that you should come to the Finiki Junction and come and meet them so that we can come down to the branch of this church. So that my friend, if I am, we used to spot together because I do normally do athletic. I do sports myself. I don't have a coach. I don't have anything. I train myself. And I know that God will give me a coach to succeed in Jesus' name. So one day, something just touched me. And that it's like these church people, I've already seen them before. Because this Redeemed Church, they do normally come, sheer clothes, shoes, many things like that. They will just keep it on the table. And they will just pray for us and say, choose your choice. Don't take more than one. Don't take more than anything. Just take what you want and go back to your seat. So something just touched me on my mind. That it's like this church that they used to come at that bola to share all these things. It's like this is the church. And due to that time, I don't know the branch of this church. So something touched me one day. I should tell that my friend that if I, we should come down to this branch so that we can know the church normally, so that we attend the church together. So one day, I was coming back from stadium. I went home. I didn't have money. I didn't have anything, even water, nothing. I just have a call. And it was my friend, Defying. The boy is a security at PZ, at Five Star there. So when I went down there, he called me that, did you have a job? I said, no. He said, I should run down to there. When I run down to there, and it was a security, because he has mouth there. He now asked me, ah, because they used to call me baby face as a guy name, but my real name is Samuel. So he now told me that I wait outside, that you're going to call somebody that will employ me in this work. When I enter inside the work, something was telling me that this work is not the work that God says I should do, but I should just have patience and go inside this company. When they took me inside the company, I saw a container, like eight containers inside the company. So they used to load all this cream. What happened? Uh, what happened? They used to load all this cream and um, soap. So they say I should load a container of 40 feet. Uh, and I asked the guy that if I should load the container of 40 feet, we are two boys in this container. How much they would, they would pay us in this container? He asked me they will pay me 500 naira. And I said, ah, 500 naira is too poor. We have no time. What happened? Okay. Mention how God, so, where you meet God. I thank God for what God has done because my life is already changed. And now I know I'm being in Bola again. So all those people that used to see me now, they say that, ah, this boy is a Christian, no, he's a pastor, and now he's going to church. So I thank God for what God has done for me. So I joined the house fellowship on Itola then. And for us, it was like church because 
a manual before the next Sunday. You go and read it. You prepare for it. It was a place you could ask questions. It was a place you could argue. And that was how I started growing. With time, I found that where can I join? Freedom Hall for me then was not easy. My husband wasn't a born again, blah, blah, blah. So there was a para, um, para worker or something like that. We were no real workers. So we, I joined that. And that was where I grew more. I became a house fellowship leader. And from being a house fellowship leader, I learned how to pray. I learned how to fast. Because on every door of our fellowship, you had to fast. You had to pray before. You had to go to the house of the, um, the people whom you were using their home. You check if it was clean. You had a relationship with them. And for me, really, house fellowship took me to where I am today. And I encourage all of us to join the house fellowship in Jesus' name. Every day, the believers met in the temple and in their members' homes. So there's meeting in church, bigger church. There's also a meeting in the home. There you will grow. You see, in a church, there are various kinds of growth. For example, when a church is planted, the first growth that takes place is called expansion growth, which comes as a result of people giving their life to God when they come, or transfer growth. People in church A who want to say, I like church B, they navigate and transfer to church B. That's what constitutes the expansion growth, transfer growth and real uh, uh, people that gave their life to God. That's one form of growth. The next form of growth is what we call internal growth. And that internal growth is what takes place in the lives of each member. Like Sister Tessie said, they begin to grow in the knowledge of God. They begin to grow in their relationship with the Holy Spirit. They begin to grow as disciples. And that's what happens to you when you do take a further step of faith by getting to these small, small groups. There you sit, you discuss, you study the Bible, you grow. There you ex begin to exercise your giftings. You begin to learn how to lay hands on the sick. You may not be able to, you know, do much of this in service because of time and everything. But there you, you learn and you relate to one another. There also you meet one another. You get in touch with what I call destiny helpers. There are people God has positioned for you to, to work with in life. God did not create us to be to be self-sufficient. Nobody, nobody, even the president is not. He depends on the security people to tell him security report. Nobody. If they leave him, he will remain an ordinary citizen. As I, I, don't, I, 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 I watched the video, I always say, it. when OBJ was, when he was, is that ordained or inaugurated or coronated or whatever, when he became the president of this nation, for the first time, I watched closely when Abu, the man handing over his head, the general, Abu Salam. When Obijah was called, he sat down. Abu Salam moved with all his regalia, all his uh, people protecting him. Immediately, he handed over to OBJ. I saw what happened immediately. All the guards behind him moved. And they stopped behind OBJ. And he was left with his ADC. And there and then, you could know Nigeria as this, our man's shoulder became changed. Power changed hand immediately. And I noticed what happened. He walked away like an ordinary citizen, like an ex with his brigade of guard. And another man remained behind with his arrays of, became this commanding commander in charge. Praise the name of the Lord. So nobody is nobody. You need each other. If you're behaving, you come to church, you tiptoe out. You are so changing yourself. You must belong to a group. When we scatter, you must belong to a group. You must belong to a group. And that comes through in-house fellowship. We can remain here giving testimonies of people who are distressed at night and they call. The person they need to call, we are members of the house fellowship. You are alone if you don't get yourself involved in this. And also as a church, also we have a policy. I will not know all members of the church. I told you a story of how I gave a lift to a woman, a member of our church here. I didn't know. I was started talking. He said, Pastor, I know you. I said, eh? You know me? He started describing the church. I said, eh? Eh? I didn't know her. 
But through these meetings, for example, you, you want to dedicate your baby. When we say no, you get angry. I don't know you. You don't belong to any of the groups. It's the house worship leaders that will introduce you to us. And we will start doing that. I have given you a leave. We have started doing that. It's irresponsibility to just be a church for two years. No, no you don't. No, no. There's no fellowship you belong to. And that's why those of us here, you are very strategic to me. You live where you live. God has given you a beautiful flat. Sometimes I come there to do dedication, baby naming. God bless you. It is, some people say, some people say they won't invite me again. I will come. I will continue coming to rejoice with you in Jesus' name. I said, I will continue coming to rejoice with you in Jesus' name. Uh, and as I rejoice, I will tell you the truth in Jesus' name. God gives you a big apartment. You think the apartment is for you to cross your leg and then watch DSTV? That is okay. But it goes beyond that. He gave you an apartment so that he can use it. Can you loan it for one hour for him on Sunday? Between six and seven? If you host him for one hour, he will do a good thing. These people gave us testimonies of what happened of breakthroughs, of pregnancies, of protection, of prosperity, just because they <clears throat> leased out one hour to that they are flat. And you're saying, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want all this. No, this short, short, short. <clears throat> they will come here and they know, they know the around and know what you have and they will come. It is not true. This is my rug, rug. They will spoil my rug. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's the devil talking to you. Release your house for one hour and watch what God will do in your life. So I challenge those of you that are here that you know. I won't detect for you. You know. You are challenged by your conscience. You know that you know that your house is set to be a house worship center. I will challenge you to give me your name. Your, your, so that we arrange. You may not necessarily be the leader. We we'll look for leaders. But God will bless you. You'll be like Oberidom that, that hosted the ark of God for years, and God blessed him, and the Holy Spirit was wondering what has happened to Abedidom. Nothing happening is the presence of God. So I challenge you, if you're challenged, if your conscience is challenged, you will know. Give us your house for one hour every Sunday, and God will bless you. If you're in that category, you write your name, you will tell, or you come to me, or where is the, where is the essay? <clears throat> Look at him. I know some of you that can do it, I won't say that. You go and commit yourself and see what God will do with your life. Amen? You're living a place as far from the church. Start a house fellowship now. Ah. You and your children, start. Invite neighbors. Start praying. That's the manual. That's how church, that's how, that's, that's how God bless people. One hour. Even if you and your wife and your three children, start it. Invite neighbors, start it. You are hosting Jesus in a place for one hour. Watch what you will do in your life. This church also have more than 20 years fellowship. It's a church of over 13 years old. And we have, we are less than 10. See? It's not proper. My house is a house fellowship. Even though I'm busy every day, every week, even if I drive for 15 minutes after all those pastoral meetings, but at least I'm hosting Jesus for one hour. I've done it all through my life as a pastor. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. I believe you've been blessed today. And I thank God for your decision to listen to this telecast. And I want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your, Lord, into your life as your Lord and Savior. So if you are ready, you pray along with me now. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for giving your son Jesus to die for me. And today, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. I renounce every relationship I have with the devil. And I declare it's not unvoid. And I declare that Jesus died for me. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. For me, he shed his blood. And I invite him into my life to be my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. My brother, I thank you for your decision. It's a wonderful, wise decision. And I know that you will be blessed by that decision. I'm encouraging you, if you need someone to talk to, 
you're lonely, you need someone to talk to, someone to help cancel you on issues of life using the scripture. Our telephone line is on the screen. They can also pray with you and speak to you. Also, our address, email address, church address, and phone number is on the screen. And I thank God as you do this, and I believe that God will show you signs and wonders. Thank you, Lord, and God bless you.